Howdy my totally is always tubular gamers and we're back with another ranking video. We're going to be ranking a racing series, probably the most famous racing series in all of gaming. We're going to be ranking every Mario Kart. Yep, we're going to be ranking every mainline Mario Kart that's come out in the last 20 something years. There is no racing series that is as popular or as sold as much as Mario Kart. Need for Speed is probably close, but Mario Kart is just the king of not only kart racers, but racing games in general. There has never been a series of racing games with so many imitators, especially in the 90s. There are so many other kart racers, and to be real, a lot of them copy a lot of elements from Mario Kart, because Mario Kart is freaking Mario Kart. It's just that good, and like everybody who plays video games knows what Mario Kart is. Mario and his friends and enemies and sometimes other Nintendo characters just get together and just race each other. There's been a ton of Mario Karts released over the years, and every single one has been one of the best selling games for the console it's come out on. It was an immediate hit from when it first released and it's still incredibly popular today. And while I was waiting for Mario Kart 9 to make this list, it's clear that that's not coming anytime soon. So I thought, let's rank them. Let's rank all the Mario Kart games. This has not been an easy task. And with a series as beloved as Mario Kart, everyone's going to have a different opinion. So let me know down below what your opinion is. I've been playing Mario Kart since I was a little kid. I have fond memories with just about every single game in the series, and I love just about every single game in the entire series. And we're going to be ranking these games based on a number of different criteria. How good are the tracks? How is it aged? Is it easy to come back to? Are the controls terrible? Is it super unbalanced? All of that's coming into consideration. Again, this was not an easy list, but you know, enough of the introductions. Let's just get right into it. What do I think is genuinely the worst of the Mario Kart games? Like when it comes to mainline games. We're gonna do it. I also want to give a shout out to the Mario Kart Arcade series. Those are pretty fun. I like how Pac-Man's in there and the latest one that lets you go online and race other people. It's really fun. I've had some fun in the arcades actually racing other people online. And I'll give a shout out to Mario Kart Live Home Circuit where your house is the track. But those aren't main games. Anyway, let's get to it. What do I think is the weakest in the series? So what do I think is genuinely the worst of the Mario Kart series? Like, bottom of the barrel, what is the worst one? Yeah, that's a no from me, Chief. Okay, besides Tor, I think the weakest in the Mario Kart series is Super Mario Kart, released in 92. Jeez, 30 freaking years ago. The game is 30 years old now. And this is not to say that Super Mario Kart is a bad game, it's just when you stack up all the Mario Kart games against each other, yeah, I think Super Mario Kart's at the bottom. It's also the first game in the series, it really got everything started. And I think, yeah, for the Super Nintendo, it's a pretty good racing game. I'd rather play F-Zero, but it's still a pretty fun racing game, and it's a fun time. And you can even have some decent multiplayer fun even nowadays if you really want to go back to it. It's got a number of iconic courses since it was the first game, eight classic characters, and the battle mode is half decent. But unfortunately, I think this game has aged really poorly, especially compared to the other Mario Kart games. I've never really been a fan of the whole split screen kind of thing with the map at the bottom and player racing at the top. It makes it kind of hard to see sometimes and can kind of obstruct your view. I think the drifting is just borderline useless. I've always thought that. It's just not very good. The game's controls are questionable nowadays. The balancing is all over the place. I'll see some AI get freaking stars and like mushrooms in first place. What? A lot of the tracks are just really similar to each other. I mean, they even look the same. There's like five Mario circuits here. And, you know, before you go, oh, it's the Super Nintendo. Give it some slack. F-Zero did way more with its courses and barely any of those felt the same. And that came out before this. But look, I'm going to just stop there before I get a bunch of angry comments saying you're just a zoomer. You're just a kid. You don't know what you're talking about. Super Mario Kart's amazing and it was super important. I've never been a big fan of it and I'll just leave it at that. Let's just get on to the next game. So here we have Mario Kart Advance. This was the first handheld title in the Mario Kart series and obviously was released on the Game Boy Advance. And some compromises were made for the game to run on the Game Boy Advance. But I think it's better than Super Mario Kart. I'll tell you why. The controls are better. It just feels better. The drifting actually feels okay. Not great, but it's okay. The courses, I think the courses are just better. Like, they're more interesting. They're more varied. They don't repeat a bunch of the same themes. But also, this game includes all of Super Mario Kart's courses in it. You can unlock all of them. This was the first game to have throwback courses. 
So yeah, you really get the best of both worlds. You get the Super Nintendo courses, and then you get those new advanced courses. This game controls pretty well. It controls better than Super Mario Kart, and I think going through these courses on the GBA is better than the SNES version. The game feels a bit faster, it controls better, and the items are balanced better. It's not ridiculously balanced where, like, AI are just magically getting stars in first place, which happened a bunch in the SNES game. Okay, we're not talking about the SNES game. Advance was fun, and I have some good memories playing it, you know, back as a kid on long car rides when I was in a car and I was racing, yep, you know. Some of these tracks and themes are some of the most original themes in the entire series that are desperately begging to be remade, and I think that they are actually pretty fun to go through. The reason this game is so low on the list, because I do think it is decent, is the multiplayer is basically compromised because it's on the Game Boy Advance, but it definitely lowers it a bit in the rankings. I think this is actually critically the highest rated Mario Kart game, which is kind of funny, but I'd say that Mario Kart Advance is kind of underrated nowadays, never see anybody talk about it, never see anybody even bring it up. And hey, I think it's better than the Super Nintendo game, but that's just me. Now our next game might be a little bit of a hot take, but I have Mario Kart DS. Now I have a ton of nostalgia and fond memories of DS. I got my DS with Mario Kart DS. It was one of the reasons I wanted the DS. The game had a ton to offer then, and it's got plenty to offer now. Use the top screen to see what's going on, and you could use the bottom screen as like a map, which I think is way better than Super Mario Kart. The game had a pretty decent character roster and had Rob the Robot of all things. Each character had three carts which was pretty unique and has never been done again. I really liked how each character felt really different with the carts. And then when it came to the courses, ooh, we really got some good ones here like Shroom Ridge, Delfino Square, and of course Waluigi Pinball which is arguably the best course ever in Mario Kart. And then we also got the throwback courses. Ooh, those were good too. But I won't lie, there's a couple stinkers in there that I'm just like, what? Like Yoshi Falls wasn't big on that one. And then figure eight, don't even get me started. But most of them were really good. When it came to the items and the balancing, it seemed pretty decent for the most part. It seemed pretty fine. This was the game that introduced the blooper and the bullet bill. Both are staples of the series now, but... Yeah, it seemed fine when it came to items. When it comes to the balancing issues I have with this game, it's actually to do with the drifting. This game is pretty infamous for being the snaking Mario Kart where you just snake like crazy. And yeah, as a kid, I was snaking hella too. And when I played online a few times as a child, I would snake on there, but I wouldn't get anywhere compared to how good people were with snaking. And if you don't know what snaking is, you probably should just look up Mario Kart DS snaking. But snaking is one of the reasons I don't have this game as high as it probably should be. Because this game actually does have an original mode to it that has never come back since. And that's a mission mode. This game had a full-on single-player mission mode where you even fought bosses. And I thought it was actually really well done. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it back then. I still think it's pretty good now and it's really original. I just think that the snaking drags it down a bit. That and the multiplayer are pretty much inaccessible nowadays unless you have two DS's sitting right next to each other in 2022. But if, hey, if it was 2007 and you asked me what the best Mario Kart is, I'd probably say this game. But hey, it's totally worth it to go back and try that mission mode. Very unique for the series. So our next game is Mario Kart 64. Like many others, tons of fond memories. Late nights with friends, especially on weekends, just having a blast with Mario Kart 64. And even coming back nowadays, yeah, it's still really fun. Now, while Super Mario Kart really laid the groundwork of Mario Kart, it was Mario Kart 64 that really blasted it off into the stratosphere as, like, this is must-play, this is great for not only the fam and the friends and the kids and the partner and all of that, but this is just a great time. Obviously, since it was on the 64, it was in 3D, it had four-player multiplayer, it had a ton of new courses that were all really interesting and varied, battle mode was expanded on, it really was Mario Kart 64 that brought everything together. It had eight characters to play as. They were all decently different. They had different stats. They all made different noises. And then the tracks, oh, there's so many classics here. DK Jungle Parkway, Wario Stadium, Yoshi Valley, Mario Circuit, the N64 version, the new Rainbow Road that showed up here. There are so many fan favorite courses here that people just love, myself included. They flow really well. There's some challenging parts to them. They're fun even in time trial. The items are much more balanced than Super. It's more along the lines of what we expect nowadays Mario Kart item balancing to be. It's not great, but it's okay. I will say that the game does get pretty rubber bandy, especially on the harder difficulties. The AI will just magically catch up to you mad fast and will always either stay like right behind you or right in front of you. 
so that's pretty annoying. The drifting, they still hadn't really figured it all out yet by 64. It just doesn't feel that good. It doesn't feel good to get the boost from it. It's not even really a boost, and you're honestly better off just kind of turning most of the time. And yeah, sometimes it just felt really clunky, but I mean, any game using an N64 controller is gonna probably feel pretty clunky, to be honest. But hey, the new battle mode was nothing to scoff at. It really did improve on the original. Having four people meant it was way more crazy than Super ever was, and I like a lot of the battle arenas introduced here. Mario Kart 64 is an absolute classic that really deserves all the praise it's gotten over the years. And yeah, it's pretty easy to see why people fell in love with this game back when it came out, because it is pretty good. Alright, and here we have Mario Kart Double Dash, the GameCube entry in the Mario Kart series, and yeah, a lot of fond memories with this one too. Now, Double Dash might be the most unique entry in the entire series, so like the title implies, it's all about doubles, so two characters team up to race the other sets of characters. So this game introduced a ton of new characters to the series to accompany the whole double gimmick, and I really like all the characters that are here. It's a pretty good selection. There are a ton of different vehicles. Every character had their own vehicle, which is pretty fun. Weight classes really became a thing also, with heavy characters only being able to be in heavy cars. You can't have Bowser in this tiny little car. And really, the whole game was built around this whole double mechanic. You can switch drivers at any point, and you have somebody chilling on the back who can use items. Double item boxes were introduced here because there's two people. And every character had a unique item to them, so you could mix and match characters to get a bunch of different unique items. Like Mario could throw fireballs, Bowser had a giant Bowser shell, DK would have a mega banana. It really made your character choice actually mean something, as your items would be affected by it. Some items are obviously better than others, but all of them had some kind of a use. The game would come with 16 new tracks, and yeah, there's just a lot of really good classic tracks here. Baby Park, Mushroom Bridge, Mushroom City, DK Mountain, Luigi Circuit. Yeah, there's just a lot of good ones here. There's a couple I'm not big on. Sherbert Land, I don't really like the Rainbow Road in this game, but for the most part, the courses slash tracks, all very good. The item balancing was pretty decent for the most part. I mean, with the whole unique item thing, it kind of threw a wrench into the whole balancing and things can get pretty crazy, especially on the harder difficulties. But it seemed balanced enough, but on like mirror mode, good luck. It gets actually really tough. It doesn't seem like the AI are actively cheating, so that is good. Something I don't like nowadays is I actually don't like the drifting and I don't really like how the cars handle anymore. As a kid, I was pretty alright with it, but playing it nowadays, I'm just like, huh, I don't like this at all. The carts just slide all around and controlling them can be a pain and drifting just is more hassle than it's worth. It feels like these carts are on ice at times, like they just slide all around and yeah, it actually really bugged me a lot. When it came to the battle mode, it was really good. This game introduced a couple new modes and of course because of the double mechanic, it just gets absolutely crazy at times and I really enjoyed it and have some fun memories of the crazy bomb on battle mode. But yeah, Double Dash was a fun time. It's probably worth a ton of money nowadays because a lot of people have nostalgia for it, but yeah, I, I think it's a good one. Alright, so here we got Mario Kart 7 where they decided to put numbers into the title. I think over the years Mario Kart 7 has actually become a bit underrated and it's really been overshadowed by Mario Kart 8 and I really think that 7 was nothing to scoff at and it was a big jump for the series. Obviously the game was a little compromised graphically and with some of the courses because it was on a 3DS but I mean there was 3D, ooh, uh, I've never even used the 3D with this game. So Mario Kart 7 brought in everything from Mario Kart Wii, the jumps, the tricks, the drifting, which feels really nice, but it also brought in a ton of new things that we take for granted now with modern Mario Kart. This was the first game to have the hang gliding and the underwater abilities, so you can drive underwater, you go underwater for a bunch of courses, there's underwater physics which are cool, or the hang gliding where you're flying around, that's got its own physics, I really like the hang gliding. This game introduced cart customization, so rather than the carts being selected due to the character or the weight class, now you can just actually make the cart with different wheels, different attributes, and the frame. There's a ton of different combinations, over a thousand actually, and I really enjoyed this, I thought this was a great idea. It added for a lot of customization, and now you can be any character in any cart, so the character doesn't really mean all that much anymore, but the game does have an interesting character roster where Wiggler's here, but not Waluigi for some reason. 
Yeah, that's not one of the game's stronger suits. One of the game's stronger suits is actually the courses. I think the courses in Mario Kart 7 are just fantastic. They are great. Not only are all the new courses really well done for the most part, but the retro courses, the throwback courses, this is like the best throwback like selection that the series has. <laughs> Without DLC, of course. Like, it is just banger after banger after banger. I really like just about all the courses in 7. I'd say it's, like, the strongest part of 7 is, like, you'd be hard-pressed to find any bad courses in this game. They're all great, especially some of these new ones. Like, they got challenge, they got drifts, they are really made for the new mechanics that this game has, and I just think they're great. Pretty impressive seven games in and we're getting some of the best courses now. When it came to the balancing, I thought it was really good, I thought it felt pretty good, and I thought the drifting felt really good, the controls are actually pretty solid. The reason it's not any higher on this list is because, unlike, sadly, the multiplayer is going to be pretty much compromised as well. The Wi-Fi and online is going down for the 3DS soon enough, so unless you got a couple 3DSs next to each other, you're not going to be able to play with friends anymore, which is a real shame. I thought the online was actually good. and. Yeah, that's just a circumstance of the times again. But, I mean, at least the battle mode won't be missed. I always thought battle mode sucked in 7. But yeah, Mario Kart 7 is actually a pretty good game. It's a pretty good Mario Kart. And nowadays, I don't really see anybody talking about it. But there's kind of a reason for that. And in the number 2 spot, we have Mario Kart Wii released for the Wii. This might be the Mario Kart I actually have the most nostalgia and fond memories for. Like, I just played an absolute ton of this game like when it came out. And I played for years. Obviously, I have a lot earlier memories with older Mario Kart games, but I just played so much of Wii. I was just, like, entranced by this game, and even nowadays, I'm like, oh, yeah, Wii? Wii is really good. And over the years, Wii seems to have kind of become the fan favorite of Mario Kart, and with good reason, Mario Kart Wii's hella good. And after that interesting detour that was Double Dash, we just really blew the lid off, like, the series, and really just brought Mario Kart into a new age and made a lot of new fans. The first thing to bring up would have to be the controls. The game had a ton of different control schemes. You could use the Wii remote sideways like a wheel. You could plug in a GameCube controller. You could use the classic controller. You could play this game a ton of different ways. And it didn't really matter because all of the ways were great. This game, when it came to the controls and the feel and the sense of speed, it was fantastic. This game controlled great. It still controls like a dream. It is very well done. They really figured out how they were going to do the drifting and the boosting, and it is just extremely satisfying in this game. It feels great, and it's like, mmm, yeah, get that boost. It's real nice. So great controls, but what are you controlling? More than just carts. This game actually introduced bikes. It introduced wheelies, which ended up being a little broken and a little too OP, but the bikes were awesome. And I think that they were a great addition. This game also introduced tricks, so you would go off jumps and do tricks to get boosts. I really like these. A lot of the courses that were made for Mario Kart Wii and on have been made with the tricks in mind where you want to do tons of tricks, and I think these are the best courses maybe in the entire series. And I mean, when it comes to courses at Mario Kart Wii, I mean, what really needs to be said? There's like Coconut Mall, Koopa Cape, Maple Treeway, like, no, it's, it's not even close. These are easy. Some of the best courses in any racing game. Fantastic courses. Really love the courses of Mario Kart Wii. And then Battle Mode? Oh, Battle Mode was good too. Plenty of arenas there. Lots of fond memories in Battle Mode. That's a good time. But I have a ton of memories with that online mode. This was the first Mario Kart that I got really invested into the online. I played a little bit of DS, but Mario Kart Wii Online? Oh, I was on that all the time. Especially as a kid, I would play every day almost for a while. I was really serious about my time trials too, like I was just really into this game. I was really into the game's character roster also, thought it was really well done. And yeah, Mario Kart Wii, I don't really have much to complain about, I mean, the only reason it's probably not the top of my list is because the online has been shut down, and I will say the AI, yeah, it got pretty rubber bandy on the harder difficulties where they were just straight borderline cheating where they magically catch up to you, and yeah, that was pretty annoying. But Mario Kart Wii, you really can't go wrong with Mario Kart Wii, though. It's a great game. But it was pretty obvious what number one was going to be. Like, how could it be anything but Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch? Like, this is easily the best of the Mario Kart games by default. I mean, it's gotten two releases. Of course it's going to be, like, the best one. And now they're adding all this DLC to it, they're adding like all of the old courses to it. But even before they were adding those, I still thought this was the best Mario Kart. And it's not just because of the crazy amount of content, but that helps. 
I think that this game feels the best out of all the Mario Kart games. Like, when it comes to just pure controls and feeling and how satisfying it is to boost and turn and speed up and all, no, not even close for me. It's Mario Kart 8. I played this game a bunch on the Wii U, it was one of the only Wii U games I actually put a fair amount of time into, and you already know I bought it instantly on the Switch and have put a ton of time into it on the Switch because Mario Kart 8, this game rules! It's got a huge character roster, of course there's some questionable omissions and additions here, but it's still got a huge character roster, there's even Animal Crossing and Zelda in it. There might be the most items in this game than any Mario Kart before it. When it came to the balancing, I thought it was actually really well done. The way items work in this game versus the other game is it's how close are you to first place rather than what place you're actually in, which in my opinion is better. They brought double item boxes back. This game brings back the kart customization from 7, so there's a ton of different combinations. There's so many different cars you can have in this game and Mercedes-Benz for some reason. There's the hang gliding and the underwater stuff that returns also from 7. This is great. There's the new anti-gravity sections, which don't really change all that much, but are still pretty fun to go through and you can get tons of boosts. The courses, I mean the courses is just unparalleled. It's, it's like literally unparalleled in my opinion. And the DLC really just makes sure of it, that no Mario Kart game is ever going to have such a good roster of courses as Mario Kart 8. I think the online is actually really well done, it might be the best online for any Switch game. And I mean, I thought Mario Kart Wii was the best online for the Wii, so I mean, it just kind of falls in line. Time Trials is great. There's really just not much to complain about when it comes to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, if there's like anything to complain about. It is the ultimate Mario Kart experience. I don't think Mario Kart is any better could really get any better than this i mean how do you improve on this i guess graphically they could make it better in the future but like how do you genuinely improve on mario kart 8 deluxe with all of these dlc courses with all the cool nintendo stuff like i i don't know i really don't know but mario kart 8 i think if you haven't played mario kart 8 and you claim to like mario kart i don't know how you made it this far in the video but anyway that's it for this video. You already knew Mario Kart 8 was going to be the best one. I mean, it, in my opinion, it's just not even close. I mean, Mario Kart 8 just destroys the other ones. It controls the best. Yeah, it's the best one. So, hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it to this part, comment bricks as always. Thank you very much for watching. Hope everyone has a fantastic day, night, holiday, whatever it is near you. Bye-bye.